Good evening and welcome to the Kalihi Valley Neighborhood Board number 16 meeting. Today is Wednesday, April 10, 2024, and it is now 7 o'clock p.m. Rules of speaking, anyone wishing to speak is asked to click the raise hand icon and when recognized by the chair to address comments to the chair. Speakers are encouraged to keep their com comments under two minutes and those giving reports are encouraged to keep their reports under three minutes. Please ensure your microphone is muted unless you are speaking. Please state your first and last name for the record before moving into your comments and questions, etc. Written testimony may also be submitted via email using the contact information listed on the Neighborhood Commission Office website. Please silence all electronic devices. Note, the board may take action on any agenda item as required by the State Sunshine Law, Hawaii Revised Statutes, Chapter 92. Specific issues not listed on this agenda cannot be voted on unless properly added to the agenda. And archive materials can be found at our Kalihi Valley Google Drive link. First on the agenda is City Monthly Report, Honolulu Fire Department. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Nolan Nip. I'm a captain with the Honolulu Fire Department. Uh, this is the statistics for March. Uh, under fires, we had uh, one structure fire, two uh, wildland brush fires, three nuisance fires, uh, zero cooking, and zero activated alarms. Under emergencies for medical, we had 90 medical emergencies, one motor, motor vehicle collision with a pedestrian, three motor vehicle crash collisions, uh, zero mountain rescues, zero ocean rescues, and zero hazmat incidents. Uh, the fire safety tip, fire safety tip is evacuation planning. Have an emergency preparedness plan ready in case of an environmental emergency, fire, or natural disaster. No two ways out of your home and consider the route you will take if you need to evacuate from your neighborhood to, to an emergency. You can visit fire.honolulu.gov to learn more. Um, leave early enough to avoid being caught in a fire, smoke, or road congestion. Establish a predetermined location, such as a well-prepared neighbor or relative's house, a low-risk area or a shelter or evacuation center. And lastly, take an emergency supply kit containing your family and pets necessary items. Um, that is it. If anybody has any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board online in person? Seeing and hearing none, any questions from the community online or in person? Seeing and hearing none, thank you. Up next thank is you. the Honolulu, thank you, Honolulu Police Department. Hello, good evening. I, my name is um, Keone Hong. I'm a lieutenant with um, the Kali Police Station. <clears throat> Reading off the stats from March 2024, burglaries, there are one in March compared to two in February. Motor vehicle thefts, there are three in March, two in February. Thefts, three in March, seven in February. Car break-ins, there are three in March, two in February. Uh, robberies, one in March, zero in February. <clears throat> Aggravated assaults and sexual assaults, there are zero for both months. And simple assault, there was two in March and zero in February. Total calls for service in March was 564 compared to 640 um, in February. The robbery, I'll just highlight it real quick. Um, <clears throat> so it happened in the area of the Kali Valley homes. Uh, the victim was seated in his vehicle while waiting for his girlfriend when he was approached by two juvenile males who demanded for his wallet. The juveniles claimed that they were armed, but no weapons were observed. The victim immediately closed his door and drove down to the Kali police station to report the incident. There was no injuries reported and no property taken. I believe there's no arrests at this time. Uh, regarding last meeting, <clears throat> I know we talked about the um, parking in Kalihi, on Kalihi Street and the toll signs. We submitted a request as well as I believe the board submitted a request to try to replace some of the uh, illegible or uh, signs that couldn't be read clearly. I, I passed by today, it looked like um, some of them are still kind of illegible, but hopefully 
the ones that are legible, they're being enforced properly. But if there are any other questions, I can um, take the, take them at this time. Got it. Thank you. Any questions from the board online in person? Seeing and hearing none. Any questions from the community online or in person? Yes. Hi, my name is Shirley Mangshiro, and um, uh, my complaint again, I guess I should say, is um, the parking situation at the Kalihi Valley, uh, yeah, Kalihi Valley District Park parking. You know the Camphot Road. Yeah. Okay, it was brought up. We brought it up, you know, and then we brought it up to um, um, what you call the representative, um, uh, Mr. Clark, and he. He, he looked into the matter. He said there was um, someone to look look into the mat, uh, you know, the matter of the parking spaces in that in in the um, parking lot. Well, right now in the parking lot, you folks got blue and white part, and you folks they said that you know, can I help? You folks, that's you know, you, that's your folks' space. And then the city and county got the advanced parking in the center. And then when school time, the Kaiba and those school teachers have you know, they can park in there. But you know, we got like water exercise class now, you know, but we got pickleball, you know, and you know, all these. So like, um, if, you know, when we complained, it, it was okay. You know, we, we, we at least got some spaces in the morning and you know, but then now it's, it's like Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, I went to water exercise. I went early because st our class starts 9.30, so 9.50. Before 9, 50, 9 o'clock, I'm in the parking lot. There's no parking space. You had 13 blue and whites parked in each parking space where, you know, you know, folks know I mean. you, you folks can park on Camp Rock Road because, no, you know, no, no, we cannot park there. But there was only one blue and white parked on the curb, you know, curbing there. And then, and then what happened when it was noticed was afterwards, like, we got, we're going to the pool, and you know that there's the handicap parking. I don't know if folks have one special meeting that day. Not, not your. I mean, they, we noticed that these these were not the officers. You know, within the folks camp for they were in a uh, blue and white, but they're like um, SUV style cars. You know, and they like some of them. They, they were all talking stars, but they took the handicap parking. I mean, you know, and you know, some of our um, what you call exercise kapunas come. They have the packet to park there, yeah, but they think you know they're not gonna park there. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so we just, I mean, well, we know you know, well, yeah. What is, yeah, what is the like, uh, like a solution? What if, you know, like I, I, I know you folks busy, but what if you folks at least took out like maybe. Five of your cars, you know, like like in in the mornings, like you know that the pool is gonna, you know, have the exercise or the activities, mm -hmm. and just park it on Camphot Road, and then you folks just you folks can you know put it back up in the afternoon, I guess, you know. But then you folks don't have to move it when there's no like spring recess, holidays, because the the pool might be closed and the school is closed. So so as far as we got parking, right? yeah, it's, and, you know. But we just, I mean, we just was thinking of a solution. I mean, you know, like, and it's not only for us, you know, the water exercise. Uh, it's for the people who lap swimming there and for the, I, I've seen, um, like, some, some like, mothers come, you know, like, in the morning, they come, they, they, they have the little two-year-old, and they're walking to the field, you know, to let, you know, they walk, to do their walking exercise, you know, so, but... But I mean, was so we're you know what we're parking on the red curvy, we're parking on a stall on the red curvy, you know. He's <laughs> <laughs> making the walk. He's a copy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but we asked them, and they said no, they're not going to pick it up. But then, if we park in the city and county yeah. van section, we'll pick it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look into it. Okay. Do we have an agreement for ten? Ten stalls, in the dumpster. Um, if there are yeah. more than, then yeah, I gotta. <clears throat> that's most likely my watch because they're off okay. duty, right? You know, the cars that are not being used, mm -hmm. they should be ten, and then the rest should be on the um, the roadway. Yeah. So thirteen, then three guys, 
didn't park in the appropriate stall. So I'll remind them. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but we always have um, personnel movements. Our last personnel movement was in March. So maybe the newer officers that arrived at our station didn't get the memo. So I'll make sure that I pass that word on. That's, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And then that a handicap awesome. store, if, if you guys see that, even if it's us, I know you guys probably wouldn't want to go over there and tell us to move, but they shouldn't be stalls for very long, if anything, if they're not on a case or some kind of emergency. So you can call 911, remain anonymous, and just say, you know, there's a bunch of uh, cars parked yeah. in a handicap park. You don't even okay, need to say, they're out there. I mean, they're and right there. Um, so, yeah, so, so we could say, oh, can we have the parking space if we say that, you know? What I mean? Good, Maybe. yeah. That's how you approach us, right? They probably didn't yeah. realize that, you know, mm -hmm. that especially if you said they appeared to be from out of district, they don't know the situation over there. So they may be oblivious. <laughs> to so this is how you approach us. At least we have 10, 10 um, show up, you know, water exercise. And then there's like three to five lap swimmers, you know, like that. Doing, and then the pickleball starts at 9, 9.45. So I don't know how many people come back for that after, you know, that we part of the Thank you, Roe. Yes. I think, did you add anything else no, to say? Oh, no, okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Kunlai has a comment. Uh, Lieutenant Hall, uh, who enforces the parking in uh, that uh, recreation parking lot? Yeah, so Parks and Recs do have, you know, it's so like, if there's a parks and recs guy and he knows that the people parking there are not using the parks, he can call us in their certain sections, but ultimately the police would be the ones to cite vehicles for violations in that city and county parking lot. So yeah, yeah but it help is a representative. I know like other parks, there's sometimes a representative that um, takes care of the park, kind of like by UH, right? So if the students are parking at one of maybe countywide park, and they're going to school and leave the car there all day. We kind of need someone that is an authorized rep to tell us that, you know what, I saw this person park here 30 minutes, whatever, look like they went to class unauthorized. Then we can cite it because we don't have an officer watching every car that comes in yeah. knowing who's authorized or not. But that would help. Lieutenant Hall, I, yes. I've been at the parking lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've seen people uh, park, you know, parking lot and go over to the Avalon. To the nursing home across the yeah. street. Yeah. I mean, I've I seen that. I've I seen them walk out of the parking lot. So, where they go? They go over the overpass and they go to Avalon. So, that would be a situation where they're not supposed to be there. Yeah. So, if you, I don't know what you're. But somebody got to call you guys. <laughs> No, I'm not there every day, so, but I just yeah. happened to see that one time. A couple times mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah, so similar to like private like stores and whatnot, they hire their own um, tow companies or whatnot to keep their patrons, the one using the stalls with the city, usually is maybe the Parks and Recs guys who's the authorized uh, representative that can uh, be there more often than we can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions online or in person? Seeing and hearing none. Thank you. <coughs> Up next is Board of Water Supply, Iris Oda. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I just have one general announcement. We have Detect a Leak Week. The Board of Water Supply, we've once again partnered with Hardware Hawaii for the annual Detect a Leak Week campaign. It runs from Sunday, April 14th through Saturday, April 20th. Um, so it's time to chase down and repair those leaky, pesty leaks. So this campaign is an annual reminder to check your plumbing fixtures and irrigation system for leaks. And one of the most common leaks is a leaky toilet, which is usually caused by a worn out flapper. So learn more about the leak detection and win some prizes at our in-person event on Wednesday, April 17th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Tamarin Park, at Bishop Square area in downtown Honolulu. And as always, you can go to boardofwatersupply.com for more information. 
So that's my one announcement. I just want to remind everyone about the $100 toy re toilet rebate that ends on April 18th. So don't forget to put in for the $100 toilet rebate if it qualifies. Uh, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board online in person? Seeing and hearing none. Any questions from the community online in person? Seeing and hearing none. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, up next on the agenda is meeting determination for date, time, and location. We'll go one on uh, one by one. So for date, we'll start with date. Um, do we agree that um, we will meet on the second Wednesday of every month? Or does anyone have any suggestions on change? If there's no suggestions, we can just vote to be sure to keep it on the second Wednesday of the month. Um, and Spencer will do the tally right now. Okay, I don't see Ethan Dayton online. Uh, I don't see Randy Ikaiko Hesse. Yes, it's fine. Chester Koga. Yes, yes. Alan Kumalai. Uh, yes. Simeon Rojas. Yes. Fernando Tan. I see him. He muted. Fernando. Can you hear us? We can see you, but we can't hear you. Okay, oh, thumbs up. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and Chair Tumbaga. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then for time, 7 p.m. Um, if anyone wants to suggest a different time, we can vote on that. But so far, I'm seeing and hearing no change for 7 p.m. Uh, well, someone, well, someone from the community suggested 6 p.m. Um, we, would we vote on yes or no for 6 p.m.? <coughs> Do we just, um, from just board, right? You can just see if there's any discussion, if anyone okay. wants it. But if not, then just. Okay, any discussion? Uh, should we keep seven or should we change to six? Um, do we have time to discuss it? Or yeah, we can discuss it? right now. I mean, right. Um, do you want to move to, to meet at, not, at six? Would you like to make the motion? Um, mm -hmm. Well, we got to talk about it as a board. Yeah. You don't need to support it to make a motion. <coughs> you can just move to go to discussion. Okay, so move, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, so Rojas moved and Hussey seconded the motion to meet at 6. Now discussion. Yep, so we can discuss 6, 6.30. Maybe 6.30. Is there okay. any reason for uh, changing to 6? Some people might want to be adjustable and flexible for it, but um, mm -hmm. you know, people that work, yeah. Yeah. you make yeah. them too early, they might get out of time to get here. Right. I mean, but it seems like seven been consistent, so. so yeah, seven's yeah. pretty consistent. But giving some people a chance, you know, like if they want to change, right? Change is always good, right? But <laughs> this, as long as you don't know. the option. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but we got to decide now, though. Mm -hmm. We got a motion for six. For uh, Chester? Has oh, any... Chester, yes. No, I, I, uh, I'm not in favor of the 6 o'clock. I would propose that we still stick with our 7 o'clock. Should, should we vote so, on so we take a vote from 7 o'clock? It's the 6, right? 6, 6 is the motion. Yeah, yeah, so um, we can vote on the 6, and then if that fails, then we can make a motion to meet at 7. Okay. Since you made a okay. Or you can amend the motion to. Oh. I, I wanted to suggest something. I will maybe share, if I could share a little bit about the conversation we were having earlier, which is ideas on how to make our meeting shorter mm -hmm. in general. And, and one of the suggestions is to, um, is to not spend a lot of time in the meeting doing reports. You know, there's, it sounds like there's um, the, the first two reports that we have from HFD, HPD, and BWS, those are sort of required. But it tends to be kind of lengthy reports from political officials, elected officials, and maybe if those could just be in writing prior to the meeting, and then we could review it before we come to the meeting, and then if we have questions, then we can ask the elected officials um, to answer our questions. But 
but, but not to spend a lot of time in the meeting itself regurgitating written information. So kind of taking up the time, like making it at zero time <laughs> in the agenda. Meetings are uh, required three minutes, right? They're, they're meeting, their reports too, right? It's just the representatives. Their meet, reports supposed to be three minutes also. Supposed to be less than three minutes. Yeah, less, less than, than three minutes. Okay. Yeah, so we're beyond time limit. We've got to just enforce that three minute limit. If it goes too far. The thing it? though is that the time limit is a limit on the length of the report. Yeah. Right? Or they but then, yeah, then, we, then the discussion can, can, can to stretch out. Uh, so yeah. right? More time for discussion. That's we started yeah. six, then we can go to nine. No, 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 no. We <laughs> started five and go to nine. No. My, my suggestion would be we start at noon and we go to one. Like, you know, just oh. fit it within a lunch break. Everyone has to leave. Right, right, right. Yeah. Chester Reese. Of course, a shorter meeting. Uh, Chester, did you have. Um, Short. Sure. Sure. Oh, Chester has something uh, to add. Yes. I, I second Ikaiko's uh, suggestion. And maybe another way to codify that would be is uh, we could try setting a time limit, let's say hour and a half, 90 minutes for our meeting. Yeah. And oh, okay. At the uh, well, appointed time, you know, turn the cameras off, turn the microphones <laughs> off. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit extreme, but uh, that's another way other than just trying to suggest the reports only, which uh, which I strongly uh, support. Yeah, we do like basketball court. You got to have the quarters turn the light on, and when you run out of quarters, you pop. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to vote on the six. Oh, why don't we just move into the? Into the location, and then we can just vote on all three of them. Okay, yeah. okay. But that's the appropriate well, to, to have a meeting and we don't please. finish a meeting. I mean, in the, in the future, I mean, in the past, if you, if you have a meeting, so the purpose is to start a meeting and then finish a meeting, but what, what is the outcome? Like, if we don't finish a meeting or a mission, what, what's, yeah. I mean, what so, was the outcome? A lot of times that yeah. when board meetings run long, they just have to adjourn, they just stop. Mm -hmm. And if it's abruptly in the middle of discussion, then it has to be that, but they can pick up where they left off at the next right. meeting. And at least we covered the most important part during that meeting. Yeah. So that means, I think, to so make it short, let's cover what we can and then a time limit. Yeah, and then, and then if, if we, say if we only got support business and we didn't have any time for the reports or announcements. You, could just, we can, you could just say this meeting's adjourned. Yeah, and also we can pick and choose which one is the most important topic exactly. that we want to And discuss. put it first. Yeah. 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 Politicians last. <laughs> okay, why don't we move on to the location discussion and yeah. then we can pass all the daytime date so and seven, location. We can just do it all together. Oh, yeah. no we'll change. do it together, do it together. But we got to also decide a location too. So am I basing it off this location? Um, so so I can explain Kaiva. this a little bit. So uh, we got word from Ka Kaivai that they couldn't... Um, Hold us because they didn't have custodians to shut the doors and so at that point we canceled our um, permit and we we started looking at other options I visited the Kalihi Valley District Park um, the room there and um, it's an option I know uh, Auntie Lynette told me that the parking was limited over there another reason why we're talking to HPD about their parking but um, so that's an option too, but the other thing about that that option is we have to end by 8.30. So if you guys wanted to keep meeting at 7, then it's, there's your hard hour and a half shut off, but you're welcome to move the meeting up too if you, you want to have, have time for a late meeting in case, in case you want to go late one night. But, um, so that's one option, District Park or... Um, or Kapala Mahale would work. And this is only for June and July, because in July we will need to do this again as part of our initial convening uh, business that we do every year. So um, so this decision is only for two meetings because we're recess in May, oh, but okay. um, those, yeah, those are your options. You, yeah. Is Kapala Mahale always available? Mm -hmm. At all times. Yep. 
Yep. And then we have three rooms too. We have this room, it's yeah. a medium size. We have a small upstairs and then we have a big enough all the way down at the end. And that one's pretty large. Another question. So, yeah, so we get different size rooms for what we anticipate across. Yeah. And the parking of days available, all the parking space available at the time that we yep. have all meeting. Yep, and you can go fill Costco gas next door after. <laughs> yeah, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I just wanted to say, I, that's, the, that's the parking lot that I made the company. I know, company. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so, yeah, so thank you so, for doing Because, so, yeah, so, even so. when I went to go visit it, I couldn't find parking. <laughs> Especially when sports is in season. Yeah. We are not going to get and parking. They don't finish till about 7 p.m. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay, so you're, you're welcome to make suggestions for other options, but um, for right now, what I can see is, is between those two. Um, but, um, we can. Yeah, the air condition always going to be on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it always being this cold. <laughs> yeah, it'll be on. And then Wi Fi. Oh, so is the motion going to be together then? Yeah, if you, if you want to see if anyone wants to make a motion. Okay. You can never fix the AC. You can just do date time. Yeah. You should just make it. Easy. Anyone else had comments online by any chance? Because if not, uh, I'll ask if anyone wants to make. Or, oh. I just want to ask if anyone had wanted to make a motion to have 7 p.m. every second Wednesday at. Um, at uh, Kali Palama. Kali Palama. Oh, Kapalama Hale. Sorry. <laughs> Kapalama Hale. Sorry, I'm thinking of Kali Palama. Kapalama Hale. Any motion? I mean, I move. So move. So, I'll move by Kuma, uh, Mr. Um, Kumalai. Any second? 7 p.m. here. 7 p.m. Okay. Perfect. A second. I'd like to speak against the motion. Oh. And, and it's just that I like this place a lot. I really do. But I think if we don't use our own facilities in our community, they're not going to get maintained. There's not going to be the pressure from the community to, to invest in air conditioning or to provide us with more parking. We've got to use them or we're going to lose them. <laughs> it's, just That's my stuff. it's just for the two months. It's just for the two months. That's true. That's true. Summer. So, I, just, I just thought I needed to say that. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Moving forward, That's a great that's a point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Mr. Rojas, did you want to second that motion? Yep. Seven p.m. Yeah, second 7 Wednesday here is Kali yeah. Palama. Yeah. Oh. Chester. Yes, yes. Oh yes, Chester. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. He also. Was... <laughs> yes, God. Okay. Oh, did you want to? Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, I can take the vote on this. Uh, Dayton is not online. Randy, not online. Ikaika Hussey? I will vote in favor. Chester Koga? <laughs> <laughs> Alan? Alan? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Simeon Rojas? Yes. Hernando Tan, online? Yes. Michael Gadi is not online. And Chair Tumbaga? Yes. Okay, the motion passes six votes in favor. And thank you. Yeah, it's just two months. So. Two, months yeah. two months. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, now, next on the agenda is residents and community concerns. Are there any residents or community concerns online, in person? Oh, we have. Oh, we have. Cardinals. Oh, we have one online. Or, we can do it in person. Okay, we'll do the in person first and then um, online. But if, if you, you could to... come up to the front uh, corner, these two, you could have a seat um, at the table. That would get you on the camera for the WebEx people. Yes, thank you. And please state your name as uh, well as your community concern. Oh, thank you. Uh, my concern is uh, where we live. We live on Thomas Drive, across from Camp Shopping Center, and the road is so wide and it's not flat. So people like 
fly from one end, fly over. And then like when my kids go to the store, they don't stop. You know, like my kids have the right of way, but when they're about to step down, the cars just go. They don't stop. So they have to wait. What and is then, the um, my husband's car just recently, last month, got hit by, hit a run. His car is parked outside, and the person just hit his car and just didn't even know nothing. Mm -hmm. So I had to take, call the, I had to call the police, call our insurance company, and then he had to take it in for, um, to fix it. To have it. Estimated and then fix. I just want to reconfirm Hala Drive, H A L A? Yeah. yeah. Drive, got it. What's, what's, the, the, what's the location? Is it the entire Hala Drive or is it specific intersection, um, or, intersection or area? The whole, because it's so wide. The road is so wide. So, like on our side, it's supposed to be it's one lane only until the break up is towards the corner. That's where they break up into three. One turn left, one goes straight across to the shopping center, mm -hmm. and then one goes to right to Kali Valley. Yeah. But it's the one that's coming, going up the valley. They come real close to the park cars. Just like when my daughter, you know, when she drives home, she's scared, so she pulls more towards the curb because she don't want to get hit by the car mm -hmm. because they don't stop because she's too nervous. Yeah. It's, it's near the intersection of Makohime and Hala. Okay. And so I just want to thank you guys for coming, you know, for coming out to the meeting. So what you want us to do seem like How's this gonna be a which department got to get involved. So we, I was just designed the intersection. I was just going to share that we've, um, in, in, our, in the subcommittee, so we discussed this a little bit before you guys came this evening. Yeah. Um, um, in actually the last meeting, we uh, we said that we we're going to try to get this, the the traffic engineers to do a traffic study to look at ways to to do a road diet on, on that area. Right. And road diet is kind of making it more skinny so people slow down. Yeah, so that's in progress. Yeah, and then the the intersection of Kapalan Kapalam Avenue yeah. and Hala Drive. Where'd you but there, every time they get did you say that you already contacted DTS? Yes. I reached out to Aaron. Aaron? Okay. There is a traffic. stop sign, but Kapalama, right? On yeah, Hala. You stop gotta sign, stop. But people don't, they don't yeah. stop. No, because uh, going up Kapalama, no more stop sign. Yeah, no more over there. So they can go yeah. through. Yeah, we can go through. But, but Hala, you gotta stop. Hala, yeah, yeah, but they don't. Yeah. Because yeah. how many times I almost got hit? I'm yeah. coming up so Kapalama. So that's an issue with the police department. And, and, also, so. and, and also the traffic engineers. Yeah. Right. And we need to look at how to re redesign it. I can right send now. a request for speed enforcement over the no, no, roundabout or stop sign on both on all the sides or whatever. Or make, like you said, skinny make the So yeah. speed, skinny. 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 Put on diet. So diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jenny Crane. <laughs> Jenny Crane, that guy. I have one question for you. Oh, you saying so that nice. um, your your husband's car got hit? Yeah. I, I so it, it, it's parked on the... It's parked on the... On, is it in front of the traffic lane? No. No, we are two... No, it's no, a duplex. It's like the second duplex yes. from the corner. For the second. Yeah. So you know the first um, duplex, and then the next one. I have a meeting for... So you the same thing? You know, my friend died there. Oh. He crashed his... He crashed his moped in one of those... You know that Ford truck? That's oh, parked on the right. Oh yeah. That for truck. He went inside mm -hmm. that truck, and he he cracked his neck and he died. Mm -hmm. And and you mentioning it to me that, you know, your your husband's car got hit there. So that means it, it needs to be addressed yes. in, in a situation. Because that he, he just reminded me of my friend, my good friend, my graduating friend Kennedy. Wow. I can send a request to HPD to do uh, some speed enforcement there until mm -hmm. until DTS can do the traffic study. Thanks. Yeah, because like late at night too, they're flying. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like it's a racetrack. Right? Okay, is there a specific hour, like late at night, early in yeah. the morning, just all night long? Um, like late at night or early morning. Okay. So when did this happen? It happened at night? 
No, uh, uh, we don't know when it happened because no. my daughter and I were going out, and when she was rushing out, she saw this black plastic by my husband's car. And then, what is that thing? So she told me to call him to check what it is, but don't touch it. So he checked it, and I heard it, oh my God. So what? What, what we could do there too is we could put like a reflective cones or you know like where you get spark, like for example, like um you know before you turn to Kali Valley on a traffic light, there's like a yeah. one area there where it's this residence and it's kind of like designated away from the house, so it's kind of showing when the when the vehicle is coming in there's like um. There's like a divided, divided white line. So you, as a driver, you can kind of see like, you know what I mean, like a marker. Mm -hmm. So we could, we could create a marker where you guys park, so that way they see a marker. No, because a lot of times people use our driveway to make a U-E. Mm -hmm. They pull up to my driveway and then they back up and then make a U-E. You can see a DTS. Go to Kurt. Was there, um, yeah, so we'll, thank you for bringing up the community concern. And so we will um, um, put in those requests for DTS and HPD. Thank you for being here and letting us know. And, oh, yeah, you have one more. Um, you know, um, yes. business stretcher vans, they don't live in our area, they live somewhere else. Are they allowed to leave their vans there, their business vans? Uh, city street how is it just overnight or is it yeah because what the guy does is he parks his car there takes the van and then when they finish they park the van on our street and then take the car home okay I'll, i i can ask um dts and hpd see if there's anything about that so if you come to next month's meeting we should have the answers from from this meeting yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have one more person online. Was that um, cards? Cards. Hi, yes. Hi, cards. So, I, I'm cards. I'm from, I'm coming here as an individual, but I just wanted to let people know that I'm a part of the team. I have not been here since January, but it's nice uh, being back here again. And I just wanted to say I have watched the YouTube videos of uh, this neighborhood board. So I just want to say thank you for all the work that you have got, that you guys have done. Uh, congrats to Chair Tumbaga for becoming chair and uh, board member Gotti uh, for being inducted as a new board member. And I also wanted to say uh, mahalo nui again to Chair Tumbaga for helping us uh, the past few months. Uh, not gonna go into full details, but she has been very helpful uh, in supporting us and our community, including Rama. So I want to thank her, and uh, I do hope that we continue to work together as two boards, and that we are of one Kalihi, and welcome to Kalihi Kalama uh, for the next two, three months. Very excited to see what you guys have in store. Thank you, Cards. Yeah. And I'm hoping we do a lot more um, this these past few months. And yeah, so thank you so much, Cards, for attending online. And are there other community concerns online or in person? Um, seeing and hearing none. But thank you guys so much. And we are going to move on to our uh, presentation, which is opening of the Kauhale by Cedar Church by John Mizuno. I believe he's online. Is he? Okay. There he is. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. Thanks, uh, board members. I just wanted to thank everyone. We are um, on the verge of opening up another Kauhale. It's going to be at Pastor Kim's church. Uh, we've got much of the work for the infrastructure, the, um, the sewer line, and added restrooms. I think four restrooms were put in along with about four or five showers, all ADA compliant. Uh, this is gonna be for our Kupuna for homeless. Um, during the 2024 point in time count, I was amazed at the number of elderly that were actually in the, on the streets. 
uh, homeless. And in talking with the governor and his chief of staff, Brooke Wilson, um, a, a targeted approach to help our Kupuna get off the streets and get into a cow holly, get into a shelter or a home um, is a priority. And so uh, grateful for the friendship with Pastor Kim and Cedar Church, but uh, at this point, we're also grateful to get a number of um, construction companies helping us with this endeavor. It's probably saved the state maybe a quarter, maybe even half a million dollars uh, in cost. Um, not all services uh, will be donated, but at this point, probably the bulk of the costs uh, have been offset by uh, contractors helping with this Kohali um, at Pastor Kim's church. Again, it's, it's not gonna be very big. We're looking at probably 15 units and so we will be serving our elderly that are homeless. We're going to be working with the case managers. Um, if anyone knows about community care homes, I got, we probably got about 2,000 community care homes in the state. Uh, they do a great job at caring for people in need, high-skilled level patients, and especially our elderly and disabled. And so this will be a perfect fit. Many of the Kapuna will stay there for maybe a month or two. But as fast as we can, we will transfer them into a community care home um, so they can have more, more of a permanent house. So at this point, um, I just wanted to share with the board and with the Va Kalihi Valley what we're doing. did want to thank everybody for coming out to the opening of the Wilson Street Kauhale. Uh, Chair, I wanted to thank you. Um, members Kumalai and Rojas, thank you for showing up. Really appreciate you being there and supporting our Kohale initiative. Um, glad it's in Kalihi and we're helping to reduce homelessness and help our people in need. Just a great example. So again, I just wanted to thank the board members, the chair, the chair for uh, joining us along with the two other board members. Wanted to point out some of the board members have been helping us with the Kohale initiative uh, as far as education, workforce development, and even farming. So it's all about sustainability. A uh, special shout out to those uh, outstanding members of ours that are helping our Kohale initiative move forward. And I think that's about it. I just wanted to thank everyone and I'm here for any questions. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from the board online in person? Seeing and hearing none. Are there any questions from the community online in person? Seeing and hearing none. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Chair and board members. God bless. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Up next is uh, city elected officials, Mayor Rick Blanchardi's representative, Bandmaster Clark Bright. Aloha, Chair, board members, community. Can you guys hear me? Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, just a quick set of announcements, the mayor's monthly newsletter. I put the link in the chat for you to take a look at it. Just some ideas from those, that newsletter, the state of the city address, uh, town hall meetings, the agreement with the Department of Health to open up a behavioral health crisis hub in Ivile. The Royal Hawaiian Band is gonna be moving into a new home at Waikiki Vista and an important traffic update for the Lanikai area. Again, the link is in the chat. Um, one note that might be important for all of us, uh, the mayor has been doing town hall meetings across the island. Um, our area will be on Thursday, April 18th, 6.30 p.m. at Ke'elikolani Middle School. Again, that's Thursday, April 18th, 6.30 p.m. at Ke'elikolani Middle School. Just a couple of follow-up items. Uh, they were both regarding DTS. The first one was uh, no parking. And can a no parking sign be installed fronting 1710 Kilohana Street? And the second was a request for a traffic study to be done at the intersection of Wailele Street and Kamanaiki. Uh, for both responses, the DTS will conduct an investigation which may require research, site inspections, and an analysis of the traffic history and traffic collision history take appropriate action as warranted by their analysis. They will inform the board of the status of their findings when the investigation is completed. And that's all I have. 
Chair, hopefully that was within three minutes and open for questions. Thank you, and it was. Um, any questions from the board online or in person? Seeing and hearing none. Any questions from the community online or in person? Seeing and hearing none. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Council Member Tyler Dos Santos Tam's office. Uh, is Lynn Robinson on? Or if not, may, or maybe, yeah, if there's no one from Council Member Tyler Dos Santos Tam to speak with us, then we will move on to state elected officials, Governor Josh Green's representative, Deputy Director Kristen Sakamoto. Apologies, I didn't take out DOT representative. It's my mistake. Is Kristen Sakamoto on? Hi, good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Kristen Sakamoto here tonight on behalf of the Office of the Governor. I did uh, put a link to the Governor's newsletter in the chat. Um, I have a couple, um, several actually follow-up responses from uh, Department of Transportation, so I'll just dive right into those. Uh, the first one was from the February meeting. Uh, I believe board member Tan had shared a comment and suggestion regarding the lack of signs for rental car offices at the airport. Uh, so according to the Department of Transportation, uh, additional signs are currently being planned under the airport terminal two ticket lobby improvement project in the terminal areas fronting the rental car facility. Uh, the request for additional signage in the facility um, is also being passed on to the rental car operators that are leasing the spaces in the building. And more roadway signs are also being planned after the opening of the rail station at the airport. Uh, regarding parking spaces at the rental office, unfortunately parking uh, is severely limited by space constraints, uh, but the Department of Transportation just wanted to note that there are paid public parking spaces available in neighboring parking in the neighboring parking structure. Uh, from last month's meeting, there was a question about Act 244, Session Laws of Hawaii 2023, which created the Safe Route to School Advisory Committee. Uh, within the Department of, Department of Transportation. So uh, the Safe Routes to School Advisory Committee is still in the process of being filled. Once the committee convenes, information could be posted on the Department of Transportation's website upon the committee's request. Uh, it will be, if something is posted, it will be at hidot.hawaii.gov slash highways slash srts. SRTS for safe routes to school advice for the safe routes to school. In the interim, uh, the $10 million that was appropriated from the highway funds will not lapse. So the funds will be used by the Department of Transportation for safety projects, uh, which could potentially include uh, creating of paths and shoulder bikeways, bridge widening. They're looking at uh, various projects to potentially use the funds. And the third and final follow-up I have from the Department of Transportation, uh, unfortunately, a representative was not able to make it to the meeting tonight, but they did want to pass on information about the intersection of Like Like and North School Street. So the no right turn on red restrictions for westbound North School Street onto northbound Like Like Highway and eastbound North School Street onto southbound Kalihi Street is based on crash history for the intersection. So between 2017 and 2022, there were three major crashes resulting from a vehicle making a right turn movement on red. So those, um, crash lo those crashes resulted um, in the restriction and since the installation of the signs on June 5, 2022, 
there have been no major crashes related to vehicles making right turns on red. And since safety is the primary goal, uh, the Department of Transportation will keep the no right turn on red safety measure in place at Lique Lique and North School Street. Uh, but they have heard the concerns about um, Leilani and Fernandez streets and uh, based on, sorry, let me just, so they're planning on doing an evaluation of the lane configuration to see if any improvements can be made and they're expecting the evaluation to be complete in August 2024. In addition to that, a statewide traffic signal modernization is also planned, and that project is currently going through the procurement process. So the Department of Transportation will make an announcement when the work is expected on the traffic signals at Lique Lique and North School Street. So those are all of the follow-up uh, responses I have, and I can take any other questions or concerns you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board online in person? I have one question. Oh, Mr. Rojas has a question. Yes, I have one question on uh, the right turn on red. What about for those people who's, are, are you guys monitoring those who's doing legal right turns into Lique Lique? And what are you gonna do about it? Because I still see people turning on right, red. red. Um, on, on red light. So, um, is that camera eventually taking data or is being implemented? No, it says no. It says only one exit goes through. For our safety to be more in detail. Okay, so um, if I understand correctly, you're saying that um, people are still violating that no right turn on red. Um, yes, so, you want to know. Um, if, is the camera taking data? Is anything being done about the fact that it's still being violated? I can yeah, take that to, um, gonna, to the governor's um, office. Yes, or what, what the Department of Transportation or the government going to do about it? Because if people still turn on red, that means we're still going to cause accident if we don't implement it more or monitor it more. Understood. Okay, I will take your question back. Thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Kumalai had a comment. Uh, Christian, you know, on, yes. uh, in regards to the no right turn on red, uh, we need enforcement on the pedestrians crossing yes. after the no walk sign because exactly. the cars are waiting yes. for the no right turn on red. When they get green, the pedestrians get a, a right away to cross the intersection. And then when the stop sign comes out, it's supposed to stop so the cars can uh, turn on right. But they continue crossing. Yeah. So the cars never get an opportunity to turn right. <laughs> yes, right. And the team turn red again. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe you get one or two cars that run through the yellow and we wait again. So on, on top of enforcing cars, we gotta enforce pedestrians to give the cars an opportunity to legally turn right. Got it, okay, thank you. Thank you. And are there any other questions uh, from the border um, community online or in person? Seeing and hearing none, thank you. And then, is it okay if we go back to? Sure. Okay, because uh, I do see Miss um, Lynn Robinson is online. If you'd like to um, present um, your report for Council Member Tyler Dos Santos, Tam. Aloha, Chair. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I was having some tech issues. I apologize for my tardiness. Um, hello, board. Hello, community members. I will be brief. Um, I do want to give a, an update on uh, Decourt Park. Um, we did have a site visit out there with the Director Thielen, and I'm super happy to report um, many of the park improvements out there to include um, that the, the bathrooms have been fortified 
So that means that there's custom gates with custom locks. And also the windows have been um, graded, which is um, um, pretty, I mean, it's really cool. It's all custom and, and stuff that they had work on and they did it especially for our community. And I think that maybe this sets a precedent going forward that it can be done. So um, so we're, we're doing a lighting project or pilot project out there, leaving the lights on all night. And then our community policing team is working um, with us to collect data about crime stats and and we're already seeing um, decreased activity in the park. I don't know how many of you folks have been over there. So in the last few months, there's been ongoing problems with, pe um, with people who live, have lived up kind of in the hill and that they're, they're still there and that can um, cause an issue, but what the police were reporting to us that it was more people being able to have access and being able to park and then um, be in the park. They were setting fires and disturbing everyone and and it was a real problem. That has not happened in, in some time, but um, the, the way that the locking up, now the park is getting locked every night, but there's a chain link event, like a, just a chain with a pole in the middle that if you kind of just take the pole out, then it makes the chain droopy and everybody can just um, drive over it. So while we were there um, and had the whole crew from the parks department, um, they said that they would be working on getting us cattle fences out there. So um, I don't have a timeline for that, but they're extremely receptive and, um, I also um, heard from community policing that, you know, there's a uh, suspected alleged game room right across the street there that's also um, been put on warning and it looks like much of that has stopped. So both, so across the street where the play gym is and where the big park is with the um, rest area, both of those will have um, the cattle fence to be able to deter. So. Um, no one has complained, no one in the neighborhood has complained about keeping those lights on. That was a concern of ours, that it might be intrusive. They'd rather just have the security of having them on. So, um, all good things. And, uh, we appreciate the parks for being, um, so receptive and meeting with us and working with us. Um, we, after last month's meeting, we went to the Kalihi Valley District Park. I don't know, you know, you might remember that uh, we had a community member that also does volunteer work sure. out there. That was oh. sorry, just the three minutes. Just letting you. Oh, know. sorry. That was that was very that was very concerned. I want to thank the chair and Alan and Lynette um, Kamalai for meeting me out there. Significant updates on this are just that um, our our understanding after meeting with. Um, with Director Thielen from the parks is that um, the DDC has many of these projects in the queue. And so um, we followed up with asking for a full report before we start putting in requests that may have already been there, where we've asked for a full report from the Department of Design and Construction um, about any pro all the projects that are in the queue for Kalee Valley District Park. Um, and we did receive a response from the Department of Parks, parks and Rec creation that said that there was the issue um, about the locker room and has been investigated by the maintenance supervisor. The, the contractor encountered issues with the drainage and sloping in the, lo in the locker room. A design consultant is finalizing the solution and doesn't anticipate any issues with completing the entire process by summer of 2024. Contractors are currently installing the ceramic wall tile and will be completing the tile work by April 12th which is this Friday. So let's hope that happens. And again, thank you for, to the chair and other board members that um, were there and documented and assisted with that site visit um, that went a long way. So really that's all I have. And if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to take them back. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board online in person? Yeah. Mr. Rojas has a question. Yeah, just, just following up on Kiruhana. Um, the sidewalk, the, you know, the excess um, debris and also just the big bulky, um, you know, 
debris and garbage is on the side by caused by homeless situations or maybe just it's really bad over there. Um, yeah, the parked car yes. and all of it. Yeah. Is there any so, update on that? So um, I did speak with our community policing team, and next week I plan to go out for with on another site visit, and I'm asking them to come with me, so um, so that they can see firsthand exactly what we're talking about. It's not that they don't know, but I think that especially yeah. that car being parked out there, and then the, you know, it, there's a different issue with the Department of Environmental Services getting out there and getting the rest of the rubbish picked up. But I think another site, we need another site visit, and we probably need to re-engage DFM, who initially went out there with all their heavy equipment, and now we know it can be done. I just don't know when resources will be available to do it. But my understanding is that in the state area, under the bridge, there's more stuff under there and they've just kind of resettled under there. So um, I know that um, the state house on uh, state office on houselessness is also or homelessness is also um, looking at the issue. But as far as what we can do, we're doing a site visit next week at, or next week and we're going to have um, community policing out there. I will come out of that knowing what requests I need to put put into the city. Hopefully, um, that gives the clarification. We get the clarification about what if they can cite that person that seems to be just living out of their car there, leaving rubbish there, running a business there, whatever they're doing that's really bothering the neighbors. It is. It's. It's not a safe place to live, or it's not a happy place to stay because yeah. of what you see. You know, that's the concern for the community and the concern for that neighborhood. Um, yeah, um, you know, again, it's, it's on the street, which is the city side, and again, it's happening on both sides, which is the river, I'm um, on the creek, um, the stream, which is on the state side. So, I just feel for, I mean, I live, I live Kali Valley, and we gotta do something quickly. I mean, I see them on the news that a lot of homelessness is living under the bridge. Right. It must be a very famous place. But um, yes, let's kind of expedite the situation. It's been for like, what, maybe four or three months now? Um, yeah, well, they, well like we say they were out there and they, you know, they did much of it under the bridge and then they just, you know, we, the struggle is always when they come back or that but, you remember, I mean, you and I were working on getting um, the Department of Environmental Services out there to get the few things that didn't get picked up. So I think yeah. that there's a problem with communication too, about what that initial crew could take and then getting the rest of it. So I'm gonna do my best. I, I appreciate your, and understand your advocacy and I and I'm grateful for you um, working with us on this and I'm committed to, you know, it, none of it's right. Nobody should be living like that. Just your question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ikaika also, um, Ikaika has a question. Okay, yeah. just real quick. I wanted to share, Lynn, I hope it's helpful. I wanted to share the phone number for everyone here and for anyone in the audience for HHRDC, the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, I think it stands for. That's the, they have the caseworkers that can go directly and, and and work with the houseless individuals, the unhoused individuals, and connect them with the shelters. So the phone number, this is like a, a hotline we can call, is 808-723-1475. And that goes directly to the caseworkers, and then they'll go and send people out there. Again, that's 808-723-1475. And, and they're, uh, they're the agency that we work with in, in Kuhi Valley. Um, usually they do their outreach on Friday. So every time we put a riser in, I say for outreach and possible removal and then list all of the issues that are happening in these areas. And they do go out and um, offer services. They work very closely. And I'm sure they would, you know, be very receptive to anyone that um, wanted to give them a call. Thank you, Board Member Hussey. Thank you. And um, actually, um, Board Member Chester has a question. Yes, I do. Uh, Lynn, uh, maybe you 
forgot, but uh, just as a reminder, uh, we had discussed uh, there was money put into the city budget the last fiscal year, which means this year, for uh, sidewalk improvements on Kali Street from about Monte Street to Nalani Ea. And um, I just, and you, last time you reported uh, it was assigned to DFM for some kind of action. So I just wanted to check, um, or if, if you could follow up for us, find out uh, where in the queue that work is, or um, worst, worst case scenario, is it going to die at the end of June? Let me follow up. Let me see where, you know, usually our answer that we get is that, yeah, the, they'll make the improvements when um, resources are available, but I will, I will follow up. On that project uh, and get back yeah, in with this you. case, yeah, the money was made available and it was put into the queue last fall. So I just want to make sure that uh, it it is still in the queue and not going to die for lack of action. Yeah. No. I thanks for thanks for the follow up. I'll try to find out. I don't I don't think that it would be held out. Uh, with any of the other kind of complete streets they're doing over there. Sidewalks would be separate. So um, I'll let you know. Thank you. And uh, any more questions? We actually have a question from Mr. Sung from the community. If no other board members have a question. Okay, Mr. Sung, did you wanna, oh, can, can you come up here? To if you want, yeah, yeah. You so can that you come can come up to the front of the table, yeah, to ask you. Thank you. We're also behind. Hi, Lynn. James, oh, so right here's the speaker. Oh, sorry. Hi, Lynn. James, so um, just a question where does a council member stand on the three percent raise that he's going to be receiving? Um, is he for it against it? You know what? I have to get back with you because I haven't seen his public statement and he hasn't, um. And I haven't discussed it with him, but I'd be happy to get back with you. Because he just got a huge raise last year. Yeah, I do know. I mean, I'm not speaking for him at all. I do know that the the rate commission was just trying to get ahead of having to go through this through a vote every year to just kind of have it be incremental. But I also see the feedback that it seems like the timing is a little off. So um, I can I can get back with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions online or in person? And if not, uh, we can move on. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, up next is state elected official Senator Donna Mercado Kim. Rachel. Hello, Rachel, Rachel here on behalf of um, Senator Kim. Uh, I'm just letting you know, a conference is happening at the legislature over the next few weeks. Um, it's going to be quite a busy time for us. So we appreciate all of your patience. Um, the Senate Ways and Means Committee has approved an amended state budget. Um, more info regarding that is in the community report. Um, I saw that you guys agendized that Senate bill we discussed last meeting, Senate Bill 3202. Um, I did touch on that in the community report. Um, it has been amended to a completely new measure at this point. The new draft um, requires land use county agencies to review and act on urban district subdivision consolidation and resubdivision requests. Um, so while it is completely different right now, um, the bill is going to conference, so it could be reverted back to its previous version. So um, thank you for staying on top of tracking it. Um, if you do have an interest in um, having this bill pass or not be passed, please continue to speak with legislators. Um, I think, Sorry, um, board member Chester, were you referring to the um, curb ramp project on Notley and Myers Street? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear the the um, question. However, I did get an update from the city and county DDC. Um, 
at the intersection of Notley and Myers streets, they will be doing construction. Um, I actually got an email a couple of hours ago specifically regarding the work that's going to be done. Um, they're installing approximately 25 square foot ADA compliant concrete landings on the south and east corners, including pavement transitions and a new marked crosswalk. Um, so there will be construction in the area. I'm not sure exactly what order um, this location will be in their full um, curb ramp project, which is island wide. Um, work began on this full project on April 1st and will be running till the end of October. Um, so work is going to be done from 830 in the morning till 330 in the afternoon. So just be aware of traffic advisories. Um, there is a recycling drive at Kalihiwa Ana Elementary this Saturday. So if you guys have um, electronics to recycle, um, recommend going there. And I think that's about it for my report. I'll take questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board online or in person? Chester. Just, uh, Mr. Koga, you have a question? Yeah, Rachel. Uh... No, that wasn't me on the request okay. for uh, Motley Street. My my request was for a directional sign that was at the intersection of Kalihi and Makuahini. It's uh, it's now leaning about forty five degrees. So I think with another strong wind or a little bit of push from somebody, it'll, it'll then end up in the street. And it's a deal. It's a deal. T matter. Noted. Thank you. Okay, any more questions, um, or from the community online or in person, or board? But seeing and hearing none. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next is Representative May Mizuno. Uh, is she online? Oh, perfect. I'm here. Good evening, everyone. May Mizuno here. Uh, like Rachel had mentioned earlier, we are going to conference next week. And I'm just going to mention a few bills that would be of interest for with the community. House Bill 2404. Um, House Draft 1, Senate Draft 1, it increases the amounts of the income tax brackets and standard deduction amounts for the tax year 2024. And there is also 2144 House Bill. It requires DOH to amend the definition of home made food products. Currently, you can only produce things like jams, dried fruit, and some baked goods at home, and only sell them at farmer's market markets. This bill will allow you to expand what you can produce and sell from a home kitchen. Another one is House Bill 2216. It increases the cap on state supplemental payments for type one arches, like the care homes developmental disabilities, domiciliary homes, CCFFH, certified adult foster homes, and type two arches. It increases um, the fee per patient. And the next bill would be House Bill 1974. It increases the monthly personal allowance from 50 to $75 for individuals living in certain long-term care facilities. Um, there is a Senate bill that I also wanted to mention, Senate Bill 3183. This bill requires the DOT to, trans to transition all vehicles to a per mile road usage charge by 2033 for the state fuel tax. In other words, drivers that put more mileage to their vehicles will be charged more. And that's beginning July 1st, 2025. 
electric vehicles will pay a flat fee of $50 a year until the year 2028 when they pay a state road usage charge. The odometer reading will take place during the vehicle safety um, inspection. Uh, the most controversial bill, 1630, is dead for the session. And Senate Bill 3202, as Rachel had mentioned earlier, it has been amended during our hearing with agriculture slash waterland. And it's now, it was gutted and the ADU component was removed and the 2,000 square feet allowance. All it does now makes impact fees proportionate to a home's square footage, allowing smaller homes lower costs. It also requires counties to process subdivisions with urban state land district and not through a discretionary planning commission process. And also, I heard earlier about the concern on Hala and Kapalama. Um, that issue has been an issue for over 17 years now since uh, John had started um, office. And we've been requesting over and over to the Department of Transportation Services to either put a speed bump, a stoplight, or whatever they can prevent from having any um, accidents there. However, the response that we received in the past was there was no um, accident that happened there and therefore they cannot put any stop light from um, along Hala Drive. There is a stop uh, along Kapalama Street. There is a stop, um, sign on Hala Drive, however. And, and so I see in your agenda that you have these um, board business for a motion to oppose 3202 and House Bill 1630. 1630 is dead for the session. 3202 is watered down, and as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't include the ADUs anymore. If you have any questions, I'm open. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board online or in person? Seeing and hearing none, any questions from the community online or in person? Mr. Sung? You'd like to come up. What is your position on this estate tax that's coming up now? Um, I'm 100% opposed to estate tax, and I think the state of way should get rid of it. But I know you that's guys use it for your pet projects. Um, Hawaii needs to get rid of it. Federal government already has enough. Thank you. The Senate bill that was on the floor yesterday was already um, removed and it's dead for the session. Got it. Thank you. Are there other questions from the community online or in person? And if not, we can move on to the next agenda. Thank you, May. Thank you. Uh, up next are committee reports um, and assignments. Uh, first up is the discussion and approval of the communications committee. Um, are there any motion? What, what's the motion? Uh, to, um, to establish actually the, the um, communications committee. Any motion? So moved. So moved by Mr. Hussey, any second? Mr. Rojas has seconded the um, motion, and now we are in discussion um, about the communications committee. Are there any discussion? Oh, Mr. Hussey. No, call the question. 
Oh, you have a question. No, no, no I call uh, like like it's call for oh, 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 what? Mr. Kumala has a question. Oh, oh, yes. oh, the purpose of the communication uh, committee. So I, I named it communications committee so that it can include social media, which was the original request, but communications is more broad. So that way you could also include, like if we wanted to do um, just general communication, like letting our, our, our valley know about any projects that we may be planning or even just our committee meetings, yeah. just other ways to promote that. Like just that way it's not restricted to just social media, but communicating right. generally. We have a designated communica uh, communication committee specific. So if I need help, like for example, oh, you know what, can you um, send this out to the community for me, for my sustainability or for um, neighborhood security watch? I think it would be effective as we work together in one <clears throat> for a communication committee. Yeah. yeah. I want to add to that. Uh, I was thinking at setting up a couple of bulletin boards. In, in, like you know, by some of the bus stops, I was talking to some of the folks at this DTS about it. And, uh, you can put stuff on there too, you know, notices and yeah. Would that be the same as having a billboard? No, no, no billboard. You know, the bulletin board. Yeah. The bulletin board. Yeah. Okay. Where would you put? So the the main one that I was thinking of is. Um, on Kuli Street, just Malka of uh, the intersection with Melaniha, there's a bus stop right there. Right now there's graffiti all along the wall, right behind the bus stop. And I was gonna do some fundraising to clean the graffiti and then put a bulletin board on there. Is there someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed they they're gonna get spray paint. is gonna get off face. So we have to put another bulletin board. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, mm -hmm. I think that that's, I mean, mm -hmm. the worst thing to do with graffiti is to let it sit there, because then you get more graffiti, right? Mm -hmm. So we gotta just keep, we, it's, it's, mm -hmm. we have to be sort of vigilant about, mm -hmm. about that, you know? Do, do we have like a, a, a state or city committee for graffiti? Like, you know, like because we, we had a problem with graffiti a long time ago, you know, tagging, mm -hmm. stuff like that. A lot of times it's community groups that come together. Oh, yeah, would that include the banners that are posted for the neighborhood board meeting? Is that part of communications? communications yes. Oh, you mean the yeah, the, the banners yeah, for Kaliki Valley? Yeah. 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 Can be for anything. Yeah. Yeah, it can be for anything. Is yeah, whatever yeah. community we want, whatever we want to communicate to the community. That's why I wanted to keep it broad and call it communications committee. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Can you put the word out to help the open market? It's so sad that hardly anybody from the um, you know community come to the open market. I'm afraid one of these days we're gonna lose the only two vendors that come. Yeah. And community will not have open market. Too bad it was actually more than well, last time I went it was just one vendor. So I'm glad that there's two now. Yeah. 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 Kind of sad, right? Well, less it. Yeah. Well. Hopefully we'll get the IHS to join in, yeah. because now they have a sustainability Right, like communicating project. with yeah. the IHS, yeah. And I think with the communication committee, I think it will be great, yeah. because um, then we can kind of like work together as one. Well. Leilo, can we remind everybody that's watching, every Saturday oh. from 10 to 10.45, in the Kali Valley District parking lot. Yeah. We can do it um, towards the end. So like everyone, okay. yeah. They, so, but we can definitely talk about it in the communications committee yeah. too. Yeah. We can talk about that. Like, yeah. So um, I guess we can start the vote now for the establishment of the communications committee. Um, are there any objections or abstentions to establishing the committee? Online in person. Okay, hearing none, the motion passes. Six in favor. Six in favor. And then next on the agenda is uh, oh, Transportation Committee. Mr. Um, Hussey, would you like to add on to your report? No, I, I, I think we are talking. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Please. Oh. Mr. Rojas? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted to know a uh, question about 
Philomena. Philomena. Yes. Uh, and also Wailele. Uh, I, I mentioned this the first time I came to the meeting yeah. about the guardrail. Well, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, uh, is it being addressed to a part where they're going to fix it? Is it very dangerous, dangerous if there's another accident there? Yeah, so I've requested a, a, a meeting with the, I guess it's CTS. So I'm going to ask them to come to our next meeting. Yeah, we can take this offline so that way. Oh, yeah, sorry, okay. yeah, no, no, that's okay. That's why we have the transportation committee so we can sorry. go more in depth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, though. We never had the meeting, so. Yes. Right. Well, uh, we kind of skipped through it. But um, Chester, Mr. Koga has sorry, uh, his hand up. Um, yes, Mr. Koga. Yeah, actually, I, I have a agenda item for uh, transportation committee. Um, I was wondering uh, if we could. If the committee could or the board could um, request a short presentation from Hart, mostly because um, everybody I talk to uh, about what's going on on Dillingham, they have nothing good to say. Yeah, you should have come to look at it ourselves, just yeah. What's that? You should come to to. You should be with us tonight. We'll look at it ourselves. <laughs> We're right outside of it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I didn't know about um, the meeting tonight, so sorry. No, I'm just kidding. And yeah, we can add this to the agenda. I think we might need more time on our agenda, Spencer, for the next meeting. If, is it possible for us to meet at six? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been compressing everything into a short thirty-minute time frame, but I think that Chester, your idea of having Hart come is going to require more time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we can move on to our board business. So the first part of our board business is a motion to support city council bills 57 and 58 relating to illegal game rooms. Do we have a motion? I, I make a motion okay. to support uh, city council bill 57 and 58. So we have a motion from Mr. Kumalai. Any second? I second that. Mr. Rojas seconds the motion. Now we are in discussion from, um, in support, uh, motion to support city and council bill 57 and 58 relating to illegal game rooms. Um, anyone want to start the discussion? Um, Mr. Rojas or Mr. Kumalai or anyone online? We can just vote? Yeah. Okay. If there's no discussion, then we can just vote to support City Council Bills 57 and 58. Um, uh, yeah, we can do the same way. Is, are there any objected or abstentions for the illegal game room bill? Okay, hearing none, the motion passes six in favor. Thank you very much. Up next, we have motion to oppose Senate Bill 3202, which was watered down, and um, House Bill 1630 um, relating to urban development density. Is there any motion? Seeing and hearing none. Oh, do you want to do a motion? Yeah. If you want to discuss about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, make a motion to uh, oppose Senate Bill 3202 related to urban development density. Got it. And then there, is there any second? There's no second. Can you? No, okay. Just Seeing and hearing no second, so we can move on to the third um, board business, which is approval of regular meeting minutes. Wednesday, March 13, 2024. Do we have a motion? Uh, so oh, Mr. Hussey moves. Um, is there a second? Second. Mr. Kumalai seconds. Um, any discussion? And if there's no discussion, then we can move on to approval of regular meeting minutes. Any objections or abstentions? Hearing none, uh, the minutes are adopted. Six votes in favor. 
Thank you. And next on the agenda, okay, just other uh, other reports. Chair's report, I have no reports. Um, and next is our announcement. So next meeting, Neighborhood Board 16 will recess in May 2024. The next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 12, 2024 at a time, oh, I guess the time is 7 p.m. Location here at um, Kapalama Hale. Maybe the same room, maybe not, or... Yeah, couple of Yeah, we'll see the same room for now. Yeah. Same room for now. And then, um, okay, and broadcast meetings, neighborhood board meetings aired on Olelo Channel 49 on the fourth Saturday of the month at 6 p.m. and the first and third Sunday of the month at 9 a.m. Are there any more announcements? People's Open Market. People's Open Market oh. announcement. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, oh. A reminder to the community. Yes. People's Open Market at Kali Valley Rec Center every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 10.45. We uh, encourage you to uh, participate in the uh, open market. Thank you. I did just want to also mention that the NCO got a new website if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, still working on a couple of kinks when you set up a new website. There's always a few few glitches but we're we're gonna get it finalized here pretty soon. Yeah it's a nice website. It's really good. I like that all the documents are talking sharing. Sure. It's yeah. more efficient. Yeah. Okay. Also this weekend is the Klee Valley Aqua bike ride uh, for the key vibe. Is it this week? This I thought Saturday. It happened. Oh did it not? No not it's, yet. it's this coming Saturday. Oh this coming Saturday. Yeah. Okay. I think is registration still open or I'm not sure. I think you can okay. register on the spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was wondering. I was thinking about joining, but I was like, I need a oh, bike. Oh, you should come. You can get a bike. <laughs> I need a bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah so they have bikes there too. You can, you can oh, borrow. Yeah. Them. Got it. And that's going to be this um, this Saturday, what time again? I think early is. I don't know. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, something. It's on the website. It's by K Vibe, though. Yeah. yeah. K V I B E. And if there are um, no more announcements, then meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. 8.32. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.